Escape from Tarkov is already an intensive piece of software, but SPT requires that you run the game's emulated server locally, which inevitably requires a little more from PC hardware. For most, this difference is negligible and won't impact their experience to any significant degree. After all, many SPT players get plenty more than 60 FPS on average, but it's all circumstantial. Depending on your hardware and configurations, operating system and available memory, you could see good performance or very bad performance in-game. In general, NVIDIA graphics cards and Intel processors seem to have the best shot at good consistency and performance from SPT, while AMD hardware tends to struggle a bit more, again all circumstantial. We haven't been able to figure it all out, there's quite a lot more going on than with many other games. Mostly, I think the majority of players will just have to try their luck and work through configurations to eventually improve bad performance if they're struggling with FPS. Fortunately, there are options, but perhaps not as many as you might think. Before I get into the tips and tricks, remember that all or none of them may work for you. Some try a few things and see improvements right away, while others try everything and see very little. Generally speaking, if you can run Escape from Tarkov at a reasonable frame rate, then you should be able to run SPT at a similar frame rate without much strain. Adding mods that run constantly in raids, like those that affect bot behaviors and game graphics, will introduce additional strain that may need mitigation. So first, be sure that your PC is well configured for gaming in an environment like Tarkov. Nvidia users have a suite of tools in the GeForce Experience application that may help with hardware performance during play. Disable features that you won't be using, like any sort of replay capture or dense overlays with system or chat information. Some cards can be overclocked from the GeForce interface, but first ensure that it's necessary before trying it right away. We'll call it a last resort. Also ensure that you're playing at the correct resolution for all of your hardware, including your monitor. Escape from Tarkov is already very graphically intensive and relies heavily on the CPU, what with the whole optimization thing. For many users, simply reducing the graphics will improve frame rates and latency in raids, especially when it comes to post effects and super sampling, which put much more load on the hardware. Bottlenecking is the most common cause of frustration with SPT performance, as many CPUs and GPUs just can't cooperate well enough to share the load properly. Let's look at some measures that can be taken if performance is still bad with normal or even light graphics settings in the game. For one thing, a simple modification to SBT's boot.config file can help the game make use of every CPU core available. The exact modification is featured on my SPT guide, always linked in my video descriptions. No need to worry about complexity here, you'll only need to copy and paste some text. The important part is to ensure that you list just one fewer than the number of cores in your processor. I've got 16, so I've put 15 in that particular field. I can't speak for everyone, but it certainly improved performance for me, and several others in the Club Starbucks Discord server. There are also several ways to use mods to help SPT run a little more smoothly, maybe even a lot more. In regards to mods that exist solely to reduce the strain on PC hardware, we've got things like the Declutterer, Remove the Dead, and the Body Disposal Service Maid. The Declutterer is an ingenious mod that actually removes much of the useless, unmoving trash and refuse just sitting around and consuming resources. It's widely used and even necessary for many with limited hardware, as it can truly help FPS in raids. While it can cause those raids to load more slowly at first because it's using that time to remove the clutter or according to your specifications, the trade-off in performance can be well worth it. Set the in-game graphics to medium if objects and raids are replaced with large white polygonal shapes that'll return things to normal. Remove the Dead and Body Disposal Service Made are mods that delete corpses from the map according to parameters set in the Bepinex menu. This is a great move for performance as the bodies can really pile up, again unnecessarily using PC resources just to remain on the ground. Your mileage may vary, but long raids with numerous bots are almost certain to benefit from mods like these. Some of the larger mods, like Sane, Donuts, and Amanza's graphics actually come with performance-focused settings to use for low FPS situations. For one thing, Donuts provides robust ways of limiting the number of bots that can spawn in or be present in a raid, using the quiet raid scenarios, which spawn fewer bots than the others. Setting a spawn cap and opting to despawn excess bots at the start of new waves all remove strain from PC hardware. It's even possible to prevent group spawns and limit them by distance from the player. Sane also comes with performance settings that limit the number of checks and actions that bots perform, which may prove to be even more impactful than the donuts modifications for some. Even Amon's graphics can be used to remove the hazy Tarkov fog and other effects to add a few extra frames for those in terrible need. Additionally, the lossless scaling application is another popular method of increasing the frame rate of SPT, but I haven't used it, and users report a certain amount of input lag with it running. It's designed to upscale reduced graphics in a game without impacting performance, essentially faking texture resolutions to a certain extent and giving the difference in FPS to your display. Sounds cool to me, and I've spoken with many users, it's clearly a popular solution, but it isn't free and won't work for everyone. I myself think that it wouldn't benefit my hardware in particular, and that it's important for my position to continue without it for the sake of demonstration.
Each of these methods trade immersion and overall engagement for smoother gameplay, and that's vastly important to some. Lots of players just want the game to run well and care very little about how it looks or how complex the bots can be. It's all about the gameplay and snappy mechanics. It's true that success in Tarkov depends on the ability to react rapidly and strategically with the confidence that their inputs will execute without lag or failing altogether. Far worse than an unimmersive experience in Tarkov is one that only works some of the time and never in the middle of a firefight. Now for my own PC performance in SPT. As shown in my SPT guide page, I built this machine in 2021 with a 6GB RTX Strix 2060 and an Intel i7-10700KF at 3.8GHz with M.2 storage and 16GB of RAM. It's aging and by no means high-end in today's market, but it does just well enough to run SPT smoothly under my configurations. The challenge comes when recording, for the most part. While performance is somewhere between good and great consistently for typical play, I always lose some frames to shadow play, but it's gotten better with each version of SPT. At this point, I'm usually confident enough to play most common maps on capture without encountering stutters or game-ending lag, but I always avoid streets in Ground Zero for obvious reasons. Even the reserve map can be troublesome when groups of bots cluster in the underground levels, which quickly reduces my performance. I've configured Swag Plus Donuts to cap all bot spawns in every map to a maximum of 10 with no sniper scabs to ensure that my captures are as smooth as possible. While I use both Amon's graphics and the film look for Tarkov Reshade preset, I don't use motion blur or additional effects, and Reshade is running in performance mode, which does a great job. And that's pretty much it for what I've done to ensure a decent frame rate in SPT. I'm really rather fortunate to get so much out of this thing. I look forward to upgrading all of my hardware before long to finally play the game at 1440p for that sweet, sweet graphical fidelity that I see many of you enjoy. 1080p is always very reliable, and it's enough to play well with, but it's a resolution that gets a little older every day that I see thin distant objects and patterns struggle to render with too few pixels. Clarity is king when it comes to realistic simulators of every kind, and I'll be glad to move on from 1920 by 1080 There may there may well be other ways of helping to increase performance in SPT, but it really is the luck of the draw for many. Some can never play the game smoothly at all, while some others never see a single bug or stutter. You'll just have to maintain good hardware to the best of your ability. Anything below Escape from Tarkov's own recommended PC specs will certainly struggle with SPT, and that should be no surprise. No amount of tricks or configurations will make a Potato Play video in 4K, and the Potato should not feel bad because there are players out there with current gen NVIDIA cards struggling for 40 frames on customs. Take your time, be sure to read all about SPT and the mods you use, and remain informed to give yourself the best chance in the Norvinsk region. Keep on configuring until it runs just right, or determine that better hardware is required, and play something else in the meantime. EFT and SPT aren't going anywhere anytime soon. And just remember that both of them are thoroughly cursed, and you won't be the first or the last to struggle with terrible frame rates, so don't sweat it. Enjoy the game in whichever ways work best for you. Hit the like button and leave a comment with your own experiences or struggles with performance configuration in SBT. If there's anything else you'd like me to discuss, subscribe to the channel and find us on Patreon and Discord. Thanks for watching.